Hi guys. Hello. A win in Warzone. What does that mean? How do you win in Warzone? Uh, that's the that's the new Call of Duty. Awesome. Nice. So, like, how hard is it to to win? Yeah, like, how many how many people are on a map at once? A hundred? One fifty? Oh my gosh, that's that's pretty good. That's quite the accomplishment. Um, I've been playing a game lately called um, Paper .io. Have You ever heard of it? <laughs> it is so addictive. My friend just uh, messaged me the other day. He said, uh, "My, he's like my top percent is 18 percent. What, what do you, what? I want, I want to hear how how high you can get. So that's pretty much what I did for a majority of the weekend. Um, well, not 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 the majority of the weekend, but I played it a lot over the weekend. I got thirty four percent, and that was uh, that was as high as I could get. But I I had to stop playing because it was so so angry. I get so angry when I play that game." Yeah, it's really frustrating because like you're doing so well, and then all of a sudden somebody just kills you, and everything that you work towards is like just gone. Yeah. Do you do you only get one life per round, or is it like a? Right. <laughs> right. Ooh. Oh, so like they'll only buy you back if you're like a, a good good enough player, right? Like they're not gonna they're not gonna buy you back if you're like some chump. Mm, okay. For sure. I like the strategies. There you go. <laughs> Score. Yeah, the only game like that that I um, that I ever played was uh, Counter Strike. I played that a lot with uh, with my friend. We played Counter Strike Source, and uh, and and that game is. Uh, just chaos. There's, um, I mean, there's definitely strategy, but it's mostly, I mean, it's mostly just about like finesse, right? And like practicing your aiming and just being good at like knowing the map and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I guess I also played Battlefield a long time ago. Battlefield, Battlefield Three, I think was the one that I played, and it was uh, that was a fun one because. Uh, you know, you had the different um, roles, right? Like you'd be a medic or an engineer, right? And then um, you get you get like first place, even if like you didn't, um, you know, have any have any kills or whatever. Um, you could you could because you get points, right? As a point based system, so you get points for healing someone or points for repairing a tank or destroying a tank or something like that. So that was a fun game. Oh, nice. Nice. Right. Right. 
Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump to it. Um, let's see what we got here. So um, we are going to. Uh, we're, we're, I think we're gonna like finish things off today. I think like we're we're pretty much we're pretty much there. Um, like we've got two chapters on systems of equations, and I think it'd be better if we. Uh, just kind of finish it off in in uh, chapter eight. I don't think that we need to jump too much into the inequalities. I think it'd be better if we just did the um, excuse me um, if we just did the uh, uh, just the systems. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're uh, we're gonna kind of uh, tie things off, and um, after today's class, um, we're gonna just start uh, doing a a review. Um, so I'll be, you know, kind of uh, looking at some of the stuff that we've done uh, earlier on this year, and uh, and we're gonna take it from there. So, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. That is the goal. My goal for this week is to uh, to make a, a document for all of my classes. Um, that is uh, basically like a, a big uh, review of, of all of the um, the topics, um, and it, it'll have like different. Uh, um, kind of levels of um, uh, of, of, of questioning and, and stuff like that. So I think I think it'll be uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, so I think it'll really help kind of uh, give you an idea of what's been expected of you for this year. Um, so that next year you have something to go off of as, as kind of like a yeah these are the skills that um, are expected of me and um, you know if, if I've been participating and everything then it shouldn't be a surprise, right? Um, and if you haven't been participating, um, well, these are the topics that you you kind of need to figure out. Um, and uh, my guess is that your your teacher next year, whoever they are, uh, will kind of go over those topics with you and, and kind of do some um, some diagnostics. So trying to diagnose uh, students and, and talk about um, uh, you know different ways of. Uh, of recovering all the all the, the lost learning over the, the pandemic period and the and the remote learning because it, it it clearly this this doesn't work for everybody right I mean you can just look at, at the the numbers of, of views in my videos of the past couple of weeks and you can really see um, it it dipped down um, so yeah I've I've generated a few different graphs from exit slips and the, the the views on my on my tube yeah, my YouTube channel and uh, and you can really see a, a decline over the past um, well the, the past like two weeks especially but even over the past uh, month month and a half um, we've kind of slowly been uh, declining 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 and then all of a sudden whoosh, it's it's just it's quite quite a sharp uh, decline in the past little while so um, I think that that um, I mean, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't think it's really worth it to to jump into chapter nine and talk about the inequalities because I think we can do without it, and I think that um, it's just better if we all kind of are on the same understanding that yeah we're 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 kind of done with with learning new topics for the year. Um, and it's around this time, anyways, in a normal school year, that we would start doing a review, anyways. So I think uh, I think it makes sense to kind of like, yeah, okay, so we've we've done we've done a lot of learning this year, and uh, it's time to slow down a little bit, and um, and yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm just gonna do uh, several examples from our book, and um, I'll let you guys give them a try for yourself, and. Um, yeah, then we'll we'll call it a day. So uh, last class, so I guess this was on Friday. Um, we uh, just solved uh, one system uh, using substitution. Um, so there's another method that we didn't really talk too too much about. Um, so let me let me just talk about the methods that we do have already, and then we'll we'll talk about the new system um, shortly. So. All right, let me just get my iPad in the right spot. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's let's just write about the methods for solving um, uh, systems of equations. Of equations. Okay. 
So the first first method, um, which is uh, kind of the 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 best way to to first learn this, because it, it gives you kind of a more intuitive understanding of how this works, is to graph it. So doing it doing it graphically. So the first method is to do it so graphically. So uh, we would graph uh, both equations and find intersections. Okay, so that would be that would be the first uh, method is to, to graph both of these equations and then find oh, excuse me and then find where they intersect. So that's the um, that's the first method. So uh, um, so basically we would have something that looks like this. So we would have a graph and here's one equation. Uh, it looks like that's a quadratic. And then maybe we, we have another equation that's been graphed. This is a linear equation. And then those points where they intersect, let's make that nice and red. So these points right here would be the solutions. It's hard to read, but you get the idea. So those would, those would be the solutions to this system of equations. And remember, a system of equations um, that is several equations, that's what it means. Several equations with several variables. And in grade 11, I'll just write grade 11, we do two equations, two variables. And when you do university, uh, or if you study math in university, I should clarify, um, you may study a class called Linear Algebra. Here's a Linear Algebra book. And in Linear Algebra, you develop methods for solving systems of equations, particularly linear equations. That's why it's called Linear Algebra. Um, and in Linear Algebra, you, um, you develop methods for solving huge systems that have um, like many, many equations and many, many variables. Um, but the, the only catch is that all of the equations are linear equations, so straight lines. Um, and uh, that's, that's actually quite fun. I used to teach linear algebra uh, at the University of Winnipeg before I became a classroom teacher. Um, it's a really fun class. Uh, I'd highly recommend it to anyone who, who finds this stuff kind of interesting uh, and who's planning on, on going to university. It's, it truly is a great class. Um, okay, so that is our, our first method is to, to graph these, so to graph both of the equations. I'm just going to put little arrows on the tip of here. Yeah. So, uh, so that's our first method is to, to find the intersections of the graph. The second method, the second method is using algebra. I'm just going to put that in, excuse me, I got the hiccups. The second method is to use algebra. And using algebra, we would um, uh, use substitution. So we would substitute um, one variable into the other equation. Okay, so that's uh, that's the other method is to substitute one variable into the other equation. So basically, we would have like uh, maybe we had y equals you know two x squared plus three x minus one. Maybe that's one one equation. Uh, the other one would be y equals three x minus one. I don't know. I'm just kind of making up equations as I go. And then this method, what we would do is we would say um, okay, well I know that uh, y is equal to 3x plus 1, so then we're going to solve the equation 3x plus, or sorry, 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Okay, so that's what, that's what uh, this method is all about, is to, um, yeah, just to solve um, this equation, and this is a quadratic equation, so we know that this will have either either 0, 1, or 2 solutions.
right? Oh, and can you read that? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you can read that. Um, yeah, so that's that's what this one is all about: is to uh, just say, okay, I've I've solved for one variable, and who knows, maybe maybe like this isn't in like like a nice package deal, right? Maybe this is kind of like um, uh, you know, maybe it looks something like this. 3x equals 1 minus y. Maybe you have to do a little bit of algebra first, and then with that algebra, eventually you would find that y is equal to 3x minus 1, right? Maybe you actually have to solve for one of the variables first, and then you do the replacement. Um, either way, that's what substitution is, is that you, uh, you solve for one of the variables in one of the equations, and then uh, cram that variable into the other equation, okay? So that's that one. Um, and then the third method, which we're gonna learn about today, is, the third method that we'll learn about today is a method called, and I'm also gonna say that we're gonna use algebra, because there's, there's two, two sort of algebraic methods that we have here. So the, the third one using algebra is to use a method called elimination. So eliminate one variable. Okay, and um, so the way this one works is we would add or subtract one equation from another. Okay, and this one tends to uh, um, sort of break students' brains at first, and then once you kind of get the hang of it, you're like, okay, it's actually not that bad. Um, so effectively, this is the last topic of the year that we're going to be learning about, um, is uh, this elimination method. So by the way, I should, just, I should just quickly say the name of these methods, just so you have it on hand. So this second method, I'm just going to write it sideways here, if you don't mind. Um, the second method here is called um, substitution. So this is the substitution method. And then this, this other one here, I don't know why I'm writing it sideways, but I may as well stick with it. This other one is uh, the elimination method. So this is the elimination method. Okay, so we have three methods for solving systems of equations. We can do so graphically. I don't think we really have a name for like the method that you would use when you do so graphically. I don't know, maybe your textbook tells us what it's called when you solve it graphically, but uh, I, I would just say that you would be, the method that you're using is to, to graph, graph it. So graphing is, is the name of the, the method. In any case, that's the first method. So there's really no algebra involved. This is about just graphing equations and looking for their point of intersections. So this usually, like in practice, in practice, this method is used to verify the below two methods. And I should point out that we would use um, using technology. I.e. Desmos. So the idea being, yeah, we would uh, like, you know, we would use algebra. Uh, in, like this is, I'm just telling you, like how uh, how I would do this problem in the real world. Like if there was a a, a real life problem uh, that needed to be solved, basically what what I would do is I would use one of the the, the algebraic methods, uh, either uh, substitution or elimination, whichever one would work best in that particular situation or whichever one I would prefer to. And then when I'm done, what I would do is I would graph both of the equations in, into Desmos and just make sure that my solutions make sense. Um, and that's, that's, that's typically the, the, the process that we would go through this. So I'll write that down just so we have it on hand. So our process is that in practice, we begin with an algebraic method 
method and verify our solution. Verify our solution using a graph. Okay, so that's that's our methodology here. Is that um, when we're actually doing these problems in real life, like if you're a scientist or a data analysis or some kind of computer programmer um, and you had a system of, of equations to solve and this like this is a very common uh, topic in math that comes up in the real world this comes up a lot to solve systems of equations like you can imagine when like there's all sorts of, of areas in the world where you would have an equation just a single equation but you can think of all the, the other times where you have more than one equation that's sharing the same variables, right? So um, you can imagine that, that this, this particular topic is very important because it's, it's very seldom going to be the case where you only have one equation to worry about. Almost certainly in the real world when you're dealing with this stuff, you have several equations that you have to work with and you're kind of juggling all of them together and you want to find when those equations agree with each other and that's what these intersections are all about right this is where where the variables that we have the two variables are x or that's actually y our y and our x here where the where the variables actually agree is where the the points are are the same right those points are are expressed on both of those lines and and curves so so you can imagine that we actually do this a lot in real life and when we do so, it's best to start with algebra because it's very efficient, right? Algebra, that's, that's one of the, the greatest things about algebra is that it is very efficient and uh, you can use a lot of computer programs to just pump out an algebraic uh, solution without having to really even punch anything in. So in, in practice, what we do is we, we start off with algebra and then if you want to double check, make sure that everything checks out and it makes sense, then you go back use a program like Desmos or whatever program you like to use for graphing equations and stuff like that. So you would uh, um, just uh, graph both of the equations and then check where they where they agree. So uh, let's let's like actually do a problem here um, because I could I could just talk sometimes I have a tendency to do this. I just talk 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 and then you guys are probably thinking like yeah okay Mr. Bennett that's great. It's cool that you like this stuff and everything but like what do I have to do? Um, and that's a fair question. Let's let's uh, try a couple examples. Uh, I think we did this one last time, so I'll avoid that question. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ooh, yeah. I like this one. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do this one. Um, or actually maybe this one hmm yeah all right okay we're gonna do example three which is on page 445 page 445 uh, example three okay and I'm just gonna take a little screenshot of it I guess it's not actually a screenshot it's more like a photograph but I just don't want to have to write out the whole whole question so let me just grab my camera here this is it. Okay. And that looks good like that. Okay, good. Okay. I copied the question down. I'm going to use the photo. I'm going to crop it. Do. Okay. And we're done here. Okay. So we are going to solve a problem involving a linear quadratic system. So a Canadian cargo plane drops a crate of emergency supplies to aid workers on the ground. The crate drops freely first before a parachute opens to bring the crate gently to the ground. The crate's height, H, in meters above the ground, T seconds after the, leaving the aircraft, is given by the following two equations. So the first equation is h is equal to negative 4.9 times t squared plus 700. That represents the height of the crate during the freefall. 
So that's like, okay, so here's, here's the plane. Oops. Here's the plane. Okay. Got the propeller. And then I actually don't know anything about planes, but, uh, yeah, that looks, that looks okay to me. Um, so there's, uh, there's the, the plane. And then we drop, we drop the package off, right? It's probably like some kind of box like this. And then, and then it, it's free falling. And then all of a sudden we've got a parachute, Foom! right? It opens up, poof, like that, right? So there's, there's our, our nice looking uh, parachute and our box is uh, now something like this. And, whoosh, and the parachute is, is, is gliding the box down and then it, it finally lands safely on the ground. So when it's in free fall, we have the first equation. We have negative 4.9 times t squared plus 700. And um, just so you know, this is, and this is actually what h is equal to, so h is equal to that. Um, this is actually the, the actual equation that you would use. Um, uh, like this, this is not just a made up equation. That is like if, if you study uh, physics in, in grade 11 or grade 12, um, it is quite likely that you will use this equation. This equation models um, the position uh, with respect to uh, um, uh, gravity, uh, or sorry, with respect to time based on gravity. So this negative 4.9, you may be aware that, that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, this kinematic equation takes 9.8 and divides it by 2, and that's where the 4.9 comes from. So this is actually like, this is a real equation. And then you can imagine once you are, once you are, uh, you have a, a parachute, you are no longer accelerating, right? You're no longer accelerating. Instead, uh, you are, are going down at a constant rate. And that's why you're able to like jump out of an airplane and pull a parachute and then you're not going to die because you go a constant velocity right you're you're not accelerating and that's that's why it's so dangerous to fall off of uh, a high place is because the higher you are the more time you have to accelerate closer to the ground and thereby increasing your velocity and and then you hit the ground really fast and then that that's what what kills you um, so we've got uh, the second equation is negative 5 point t plus 650. Okay. So how long after the crate leaves the aircraft does the parachute open? Express your answer to the nearest hundredth of a second. Okay. Um, and what height above the ground is the crate when the parachute opens? Express your answer to the nearest meter. Verify your solution. Okay, so we have these two equations, and uh, the idea here, I'm just going to move this over, uh, the idea here is that we have these two equations, and they're both representing h, height, right? So we need these equations to agree with each other, right? That's, that's the whole purpose of this. So we want these equations to agree with each other. So we're going to use algebra first. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve this in three different methods, okay? I'm going to use all three methods that we have. The first method that I'm going to use is substitution, okay? So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to substitute values. The method after that is we're going to use elimination, that method that I just told you about today. And then finally, we are going to verify these solutions. I mean, hopefully we'll get the same answer regardless of which method we, we decide to use. Um, but even so, it'd be nice to verify it with technology and, and take a look at, at the graphs. Okay, so uh, let's jump into this. So since, since these are the same H and these are the same T, they have to agree with each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, if H is equal to H and we're, we're talking about the same T, right? There's only one time, right? Time is time. Um, we're, we're, I mean, we're still talking about the same period of time, right? Time, in this case, t represents the, the number of, I guess, seconds, the number of seconds that the, uh, like between that moment 
and the, the moment that it dropped out of the plane. So T still represents the same thing. So uh, H is equal to H. So let's just say that if, you know, since H is equal to H, that means that this thing, which is equal to H, and this thing, which is also equal to H, these two things must be equal to each other. So I'll say since H is equal to H, we have that negative four, oops, four negative 4.9 times t squared plus 700 is equal to negative 5t plus 650. And now, look at that, just with that one swift move, we've been able to turn this into two equations with two variables into one equation with one variable. So just a regular equation. And this is a quadratic equation, which we can solve. So let's go ahead and solve it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything over to one side. So I, I am going to end up with negative 4.9 times t squared plus 5t plus 50. Okay, so that looks good so far. Um, and something tells me that we could solve this um, without a calculator. Uh, I can kind of see some numbers that we could probably choose that would make it not too, too challenging. Like if we multiplied everything by, by 10, I think that these numbers would be round enough that we could probably do this without worrying too much about, you know, using the, the quadratic formula. By the way, this is supposed to be equal to zero. This is all equal to zero because I moved everything on this side over to the other side. So this is all equal to zero. And yeah, so now let's go ahead and solve this. So we are gonna use the quadratic formula just to make things uh, easy for ourselves. Because, um, well, not so much easy, but um, we don't have to like guess and check. We're just going to punch it into a formula, punch it into our calculator, and let the calculator do all of the legwork. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So A, in this case, is negative 4.9. B is equal to five, and C is equal to 50. So remember that in this case we have x, or I guess I should say t, is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that is equal to, well negative b is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 4.9. Uh, times C, which is just 50, all right, all over 2 times uh, negative 4.9, okay? So let's just, let's just uh, remember um, what we're going for. We're, we're solving for H. We're solving for H. And what H is, H is the, H is the, the time, or sorry, the, the height, h is the height, like right here, where, um, where these two equations agree, where this equation, which represents uh, the, the motion of the, the box um, falling out of the plane, right, without a parachute, and this equation describes the position of the, the, the box after the parachute has has opened up, right? That's that's what the that's what this the the second equation is. So when they when these two equations agree, what that represents is the very moment where the parachute opens, where we're going from this equation and we're sort of transitioning to this equation. Okay. So let's uh, let's um, let's carry on. So. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, now it's time for some calculator work. So uh, let's go ahead and punch this into our calculator. And I guess what I'll do is I'll I'll open up my um, my camera so we can see this. Actually, but then I won't be able to see. You're just gonna have to, to you know take my word for it that I'm, I'm punching these numbers in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do. Um, so the way I like to do these things, just based on the order of operations, I mean, maybe you have a fancy calculator. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna use just a regular calculator here. Um, I'm gonna start by just saying 
4 times negative 4.9 times 50. And then I'm going to do 5 squared minus the answer of this, the answer. And then I'm going to take the square root of it. I'm going to write that number down. And then I'm just going to have that number on hand. And then I can do negative 5 plus this over 2, point, uh, uh, 2 times 4, negative 4.9, or I guess this is going to be negative 9.8. And then I'll do the same thing with minus. Okay, so let's go ahead with that. I'm going to do 4 times uh, negative 4.9 times 50, and that gives me negative 980. I'm going to do 200, or sorry, uh, 5 times 5, which is 25. So 25 minus that answer, so second answer, is 1,005. And I'm going to take the square root of that. So I'll take the square root of the answer. And I will get 31.7. I'll just give myself a bunch of um, decimal places. But I will specify that I rounded here with a dot on top. So this gives me negative 5 plus or minus 31.7017. Uh, all over 2 times, I'll just write negative 9.8, negative 9.8. Okay, so this is equal to, well, if I if I do the plus, here, why don't I, why don't I um, make this the plus yellow and the minus pink. So the plus is going to be, so I've got negative 5 plus 31. 0.70173 equals divided by negative 9.8 equals. So this gives me, uh, in the, when I hit plus, I got negative 2.725. And I had to round there, so I'll put a little dot again. Or it's equal to, and in pink, because I'll do the minus, I've got negative 5 minus. 31.70173 equals divided by negative 9.8 equals and then pink I've got uh, 3.745 okay now uh, let's let's think about um, Yeah, let's think about what uh, what this what this means. Okay, so let's think about what h represents. What does h represent? Well, h is our height, right? Our height from the ground, right? Our height from the ground. So I don't think it makes sense to have a negative height. You can't you can't have a negative height. So we are going to ax this because height. I'm not sure if you can read that. Height must be positive. Okay, so in this case, h must be 3.745. So we've solved for it, h is equal to 3.745. Okay, awesome. So that is the first method. So this method that we just used, this was substitution. Substitution method. Okay, the next method that we're gonna do is the elimination method. Okay, and the elimination method is very quick and easy. So let me show you the elimination method. Elimination method. Okay, so the elimination method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two equations that we have. Okay, I've got um, uh, negative 4.9 t squared negative or I'll write h is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 700 plus 700 and then I've got another equation h is equal to negative 5 t plus 650 and that should be 700 and the elimination method what we do is we subtract one equation from the other so I'm going to write a minus sign I'll put brackets around these I'm going to subtract one equation from the other. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I subtract these, I get 
h minus h, which is zero, and that eliminates that variable. So if I do this, I'm gonna get h minus h, which is zero, and that's equal to, well, keep in mind that these two things don't actually add up together. They are not like terms because they have a different exponent on each variable. So I'm gonna get zero is equal to negative 4.9 t squared my, or plus five t, and then 700 minus 650 is 50. And would you look at that? That is exactly the same equation that we got over here. So that equation is the same as this equation. We just used a different method. So, we, so at this point, we're pretty much at the same place where we had uh, over here, right? So we, we're gonna get the same numbers. So we are gonna get that H is, or sorry, ah, H is not 3.745, T, that's what we, we were solving for T. I'm not sure why, where, where H came from. Um, time, and, and it's also true that time must be positive. So time, time, time must be positive. Sorry about that. Um, we were solving for T. So in, in other words, T is equal to 3.745. So that is where those two equations agree, is 3.745 seconds after that, um, that thing is dropped. So that's, that's what we're solving for. Uh, I, I kind of mi mixed that up. Um, we eliminated H, H is gone. And we, all we were looking for was T, and we were solving for T here. That's why we, ha we have a bunch of T's here. So we were solving for T. T is equal to uh, 3.745. So let's, let's go back to Desmos, and I know that, that um, we're almost done here in terms of time. So let's, uh, let's make this quick. So I'm gonna just pull Desmos over here. I'm gonna steal my keyboard for a second. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to graph this equation. I'm gonna say that uh, uh, T is equal to um, I guess we're gonna have to use X because um, they don't like using the letter T. They just want us to use X and Y. But X is equal to, well, what are the equations that we have? Or I'll, I'll, actually, it should be Y, oops, Y equals negative 4.9 X squared plus 700. So that's the first one. So I'm really gonna have to squish down this axis here. There we go. So that's the first one. The next one is uh, y equals negative 5t plus 650. Okay. So uh, let's see if the, uh, we got the same thing. Yeah, 3.745, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? We got exactly the same number. Um, so let's 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 see what what's happening here. So keep in mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna go full screen here. Oops, full screen all the way. So let's let's sort of interpret this, and then we're gonna call it a day. So interpreting this graph, so the purple graph represents what happens without the parachute, and you can see I'm actually gonna grab my whole mouse here and so I can point. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now you can see where, I, where I'm looking. So, so we can't. So over here, this doesn't make sense to talk about because this is all, um, this is all negative. This is negative time. So it doesn't make sense to talk about negative time. Now, keep in mind that I, um, I really like, I squished this this axis. So it's kind of hard to interpret how um, steep these lines are. But you can imagine. This represents you falling off of an airplane. Like you're, 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 like you are getting really, really vertical here. Like basically the steeper this line is, the way you can interpret that is, the steeper the line is, the more height you are losing in the same amount of time. Like if you look at, at this second here, right? This, this is from 11 seconds to 12 seconds. You've dropped 100 meters, 100 meters per second. Right, that's a that's very fast, right? Whereas um, if we go kind of further over here, in this one second, you've dropped what is that? I think 20 meters. So 
20 meters per second, right? So you haven't actually, I mean, that is still very fast, but this is extremely fast. So that's kind of what's happening here is that we're getting more and more steep, which means that we're going faster and faster towards the ground. So if you're dropping cargo, you don't want that to happen. You want it to go down at a constant rate in, in which the, the height that you drop it shouldn't actually matter, right? And that's what's happened here is that the cargo has dropped and you can kind of imagine like, right? So three seconds later, this is at 3.74 seconds, where the height is where the height is at what is it 630 meters in the air that's where the parachute opens and then now you can see I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now you can see like it doesn't matter how high oops doesn't matter how high the the parachute um, uh, or how, how high you dropped it because it's gonna have the same velocity all the way down right it's not getting faster so that's that's what's going on here and that's that's how 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 this works so you can see the, our, our thought process there we started out using algebra um, and I'm just noticing this this comment on YouTube yes I did I did get a haircut I got a haircut um, on I think Saturday or Friday or something um, it shows up you might notice I have a blonde spot somewhere here um, I don't know I don't know why but I've always had a a tiny little blonde patch. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, so that's that's kind of our process, right? We started off with algebra. Um, we uh, we actually used two methods of algebra, right? We used the elimination method and the substitution method. Um, you can see that the elimination method is just going to bring you to the same place that substitution brought us. So whichever method you prefer, totally up to you. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we used algebra, we got a number, and then we went back after the fact, went over uh, using our technology to sort of graph the situation so we could interpret everything, and this is what we got. We got something that, that not only is able to verify our solution, but also gives us a better understanding of what actually happened, right? It gives us the, the full, like the big picture, right? So uh, I went over by, uh, by a few minutes, so sorry about that. Um, but I think we got started a couple minutes late, so that's that's how that works. Um, so yeah, I think this is the the, the last big topic of, of the year. So this is kind of our last sort of new thing that we're going to learn. Um, I think that I might have just one very, very short assignment on this next week. Just like one, maybe two questions. Just a question about um, substitution. Just here's here's two equations. Please, uh, please solve them. Um, just something something simple that that shouldn't take you know more than half an hour uh, of your time so we'll so keep your eye out for that um, I got your uh, your assignments I'm going to start marking them tomorrow um, so uh, so thank you for, for handing those in um, and uh, yeah I I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be online on Thursday uh, I'm kind of going back and forth now so I was at school yesterday it was it was really great to be there I wish that you were there too, um, but of course that, that can't happen yet. Um, but yeah, so I'll be at school tomorrow and then um, and then I'll be uh, at school tomorrow and then I'll be online on Thursday. So take care guys, uh, I'll talk to you then, bye bye. Oh, my mouse is all connected to you. See you later. Gotta reconnect myself here so I can log out. Okay, now I'm going to go. Bye-bye. Bye, YouTube.